okay what's up guys welcome back to come with clinton so in this video i'm going to talk on a guide or a roadmap for beginners to learn and master django in a stand so without further ado we are getting started right now so the first thing the first thing i'm going to talk on are apps in django so you have been asking you be wondering what is an app in django an app are those little modules that makes up a django project so i'm going to give you a simple example now let's assume let's use facebook as an example now so when you get to facebook we have some different modules that makes up facebook.com let's assume you have the groups you have the news feed you have the pages you have the user account the users understand so this little component this little modules these are what makes up facebook.com understand so you're gonna see facebook.com as the django project and you're gonna see the news feed the pages the groups the users as the apps that makes up facebook.com so that's okay so number two is views you might wonder what, what what do i mean by views so views are simply they are their views are found in the django app you understand so i have two applications this django project this, this django project is called medium i have two apps called at one is called article the other is called writer so i'm going to open the article app now so the article app you can see an app consists of the admin.py, the apps.py, from the models.py, urls and the views.py in Django. So I'm speaking on views currently. So I'm gonna show you how the views is now. So example, look at this is a simple Django view. Understand Django view simply helps to render data to the Django template. Understand? So our Django template has simple HTML file, something like this, and our view is to get data from the database. And renders it on the template so that's what views does so the number three thing I'm going to speak on now are what we call URL so URLs are simply a kind of mapping that helps to so this, so this is what we call URLs now for example the URS helps to provide a path for you to assess a particular view you understand and you know I said our views are simply what I call their functions or they, they can be classes that helps to render data to a template why the urls helps to create a path for example for the first part we have here is that when we visit an empty string will be redirected to the first function views or index the first fun function i have in my views plus pi file you get so urls helps to with helps to assign us to a particular view function so, so the fourth point is simply the fourth point is the models in Django and every Django app uh, has a model of Pi file, you understand? So and the model is simply a definitive source of information about your data, you understand? And the model consists of fields that talks more about the data you are storing in the database, you understand? So we have a simple model class called post. This post serves as a table in the database and all these attributes of fields you see uh, what we are the columns that forms the table and the values of those columns are what we call the rows you understand so a, a model just helps to give information about the data you're storing and connects to your database so the fifth item i'm going to be speaking on is what we call crude and crude is simply an acronym in django or not just in django in programming languages it stands for create retrieve update and delete so as a beginner learning django is advisable you start out Knowing how to build crude applications in the stand, something like a to do app is going to be really, really essential for your growth in the Django learning process. And on my channel, I have some tutorials that I'm going to enable you to learn how to build crude applications, how tutorials on how to build a to do app. Just browse through my channel, you're going to see some tutorials that are going to, for beginners majorly, that are going to foster or enhance your learning speed. So. The number six item I'm going to speak on what we call static files. So you might be wondering what is static files. So in Django, we have what we call static files. And static static files are what hold our designs. That are these are what holds the CSS, the JavaScript that forms the web application we are building. So if you look up on this website I created, you can see we have some designs. The text are beautiful. We have some designs. All these are from the static files and static files are what we call the CSS and the JavaScript you get so and you can see what you can see down on the left I have a folder called static and in this static I have some folders inside of it one of it is called assets the other is called CSS and JavaScript these are what forms the static files 
that makes up this application you are seeing currently you get so that's it and the number seven item i'm going to speak on is authentication in django and what, what is authentication authentication simply means giving users access understand giving them access to a particular page you understand so we can look down on this website now your know, authentication simply means whereby you're able to log in a user a user creates an account and they're able to log into their profile so on this page now users can log in after they are after they have been after they are been allowed to log in sorry users can create accounts first after they've created the account they can assess the login page and log into their individual or various profiles and stand so that's how it works authentication simply means logging in users to their profiles granting them access so as a django beginner so as you keep learning django it's gonna be vital you know how to build authentication system in django because it's really really important because most websites you see around the world today they always have you know, they always have an they always have a requirement for you to get signed up and login for you to be able to get access to most of their features you get so i have some tutorials on my channel that are going to teach you how to create an authentication system in django you're going to really love it so just browse through the channel you can see one of it here django login system you're going to learn how to create an authentication system with Django. Okay, so we're almost done. So the next item is what we call signals. So you're wondering what is signals in Django. Signals helps to listen for an event. So once an event takes place, it triggers an action. For example, let's assume a user creates an account. So that's an event. So once a user creates an account, an action is being triggered. You're going to say, once a user creates an account, we send them emails. Sending emails is an action creating accounts is an event so signals listen for an event so once this event has taken place an action is being triggered in the stand so i'm going to show you how the code for signals looks like so you can see on this this is my buddies.py file so you can see this these are signal codes in this project so these signals helps to listen for an event and this event is whenever a user creates an account we want to make sure we create a profile for this user you know so whenever they create an account we create a profile for them instantly you get so that's how signal works and on my channel i have a detailed tutorial on how to go about with django signals a comprehensive tutorial you're gonna really love so just look at it up just here go down to my channel and watch this video on how to scare started with django signals so my next point is what we call databases so you know in Django, Django, Django is an awesome framework and so in Django, Django provides us with a default database called XQLite 3 and this database is awesome for development projects you get. So as a Django developer, you need to know how to switch from one database to another because the one Django gave us, XQLite 3, is not suitable for real life projects because it's kind of lightweight. So as a Django developer, you need to know how to switch from one database to another. And just a few days ago, I made a video, that's my most recent video, on how to migrate data from XQLite 3, which is the Django default database, to a more production level database, something like Postgres. So, do we have the latest on my channel right now? So, do we have to watch your video? You're gonna understand how to migrate data without losing a particular data from your previous database you get so it's gonna be really really informative so check it out okay so my next point is the Django REST framework so you might be wondering what is Django REST framework Django REST framework is simply a way of making our data available in another form you understand so in this project i created now you can see we have some we have some articles these articles are only available in this domain on only this domain so let's assume your friend has a mobile application and he wants to have access to my articles so it's not going to be right for me to give him access to my database it's not going to be right for me to grant him access to the database because he might do something something silly so what i need to do is just to create apis and give him this apis endpoint so you can access data in my database period this time so the apis are super fantastic they enable you to like make the items your database 
available in different formats whereby people or users can tap into these APIs and have access to your content without necessarily having to come into your database you get so that's what that what the Django REST framework does is super super important and most job criteria we see online they always require you know how to use the Django REST framework and very soon on this channel I'm going to start a full comprehensive series on Django REST framework on the Django on building RESTful APIs with Django very soon very very soon the series is going to start on this channel so watch us for that and the last tip I'm going to speak on is what we call is deployment as a Django developer after you build your project You've got to get this. You've got to go to your website on the internet. It's not going to sleep on your local machine. No, you're going to make this website global, and that's what we call deployment. And we have different platforms to deploy your Django project. We have Heroku, we have Jupyter Ocean, we have Python Anywhere, we have AWS. These are four awesome platforms to host your Django project. So as a Django, as a Django. As a Django beginner, uh, someone learning Django is really, really significant. To you know how to deploy your project. And I once, I once made a video on how to deploy Django, and this video has done really, really well. I've gotten a lot of feedback, a lot of comments on how it helped them deploy their project after a lot of stress and after a lot of issues. So just check out this video on my channel and watch it. It's going to show you how to deploy Django project on Heroku. How to deploy Django on Iroko is a full detailed video you get so so that was it for this video I really hope you enjoyed it I love to hear your comments in, this, in the comment section and don't forget to subscribe to Corey Clinton we'll see you in the next video bye bye